Thorough Neil with Ninth Level Games, and we're going to talk a little bit about networking and building communities in the time of being socially distanced. Hi, um, thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, it, obviously it's a tough year. It is a tough time. And the longer this goes on, the more I think need for formal networking and community building online is necessary. Um, it's something that I've kind of naturally been involved with, but um, here we are in October and we are still planning online conventions, as you know. So um, it's just something I thought maybe would be good to talk about because I'm not sure how many people um, are playing uh, or networking online in a different way than they were in March, right? Like people all right. jump online in March and maybe they had whatever game they're playing, if it's Animal Crossing or video game or whatever it is. Um, but now it's six months later. So, you know, maybe you're kind of bored with that group. Maybe you're not getting anything out of that group anymore. And you just see yourself going into winter thinking, uh, what am I going to do? <laughs> right. So, um, or you had one group, you had all of your eggs in one basket and you're yeah. starting to realize maybe that's not enough. Right. And even though that's great and maybe they're your best friends, what we aren't getting is that convention, uh, meetup, the game store meetup, the random encounter of you happen to meet someone at work who likes the same game as you. You don't have that right now. So all those extra external fun things that are happening outside of your family and your friend group are pretty much not happening. Um, I don't, one of the things I want to start off my number one point on here was socializing is not uh, going through scrolling on Facebook. That is not enough. <laughs> so it is what a lot of us do we all do it but yeah. first of all it's a lot of bad news second of all it's a lot of uh you know disparate ideas and your brain is just kind of all over the place you're not necessarily engaging when you're just scrolling through twitter or you're scrolling through facebook and it's fun and it can be a great distraction that is true however that is not enough so what I wanted to go through was some kind of personal uh, network, and I want to call them networking. I would say gatherings that you could do if you're not quote unquote in the industry, if you don't, you know, like to run games yourself, just something that you could do. So if you're not already doing it, I think hosting like a weekly meetup with your friends or a weekly game night is a really good idea. So if you're not doing that, you should start planning that, <laughs> you know, especially we're getting into winter times for a lot of the country and you're not even going to be walking at the park as much anymore. You might not even see your neighbors or friends that maybe were socially distanced hanging out outside on your porch. Now that's right. not even going to happen in a few months. So uh, I know a lot of people have started preparing themselves for projects and art and classes and things like that, which is good. But again, that might be a solo activity. That might be a tedious activity that you're just checking off your list. So I have to get that porch painted or I have to take that class because, you know, my work wanted me to or something like that. So what your brain and your uh, your spirit and your brain and all that that is like missing is that connection of the thing you really like to do. Right. Um, so a while ago, probably in April or so, uh, a bunch of us in my friend group started a Tuesday night game group and we started just playing um, things over zoom. And then we discovered board game arena. So board game arena is a free uh, website where you can play published games. So race for the galaxy, seven wonders, Carcassonne, Hanabi, that kind of thing. So right. if you're not an RPG person and you're not, um, the type of person that wants to learn a new game or try to do something, you know, wonky over the Zoom, that's a really good, easy to use website that's free. So I would suggest doing that. And over the last six months, we have invited probably like 30 people to that site because, you know, on a, on a given Tuesday, we might say, okay, well, we've got these four, this guy can't make it. Oh, put a message out to some people. They join, you know, it ends up being that now there's a pool of 20, 30 people that we can choose from. So it's a little different every, every week. Um, 
So that's been sort pretty of like good. a local game group when you're ac uh, yeah. accommodating people's work schedules and who has the kids this week and who's available, who's not. Exactly. And we've had some people who were teachers. So a few months ago, they kind of couldn't play as much. So then that we brought in some new people and it's been kind of nice. You know, it, it's exactly like that. Hey, you know, let's see what we can do. Let's see who's available. But it's pretty much, okay, every Tuesday night, something's happening. And this is where you go. And, you know, we all hang out. So what we normally do is, you know, we would have a Zoom up with video. Now we're pretty much just doing um, Discord voice. But the right. nice thing is, sometimes we'll turn the video on and say, like, hey, look at this cool T-shirt I just got. Or, oh, check out what my dog's doing. That is silly to say that that is very engaging, but it is. It's the kind of thing, especially if you live alone, where you can like right. show off your dog or you can show them, you know, the new th painting you put up in the dining room or something. So it's the kind of thing that um, it seems silly, but I think it's meaningful. And um, it feels just a little less lonely. Right. A little less lonely. You've connected over something. Uh, we have one of my friends sits out at her fire pit and plays with us so that she can get some outside time. So then she's showing us like the ma the moon and like her fire pit and different <laughs> things like that. So it's just like a different environment. And we talk about random outdoor things that happen. Like, Oh, I think I saw a deer, you know, that kind of stuff, right. um, which makes it kind of fun. So uh, that's one thing that's so light and easy to do that I would suggest just, even if you are playing games on any game that you're playing, if you're only doing voice, if there's a way you can pop video on every once in a while, I think it's a really good idea. Uh, right, the other right. thing is maybe playing some team games, uh, not just to t not just necessarily like code names, but maybe pub trivia. They have a whole bunch of things like that you can do online. Um, there's a few like online escape rooms or um, there's a thing called Puzzle Point that we do where there's like puzzles you have to solve that are themed to them. So maybe it's a word puzzle or a, you know, a code diff decode, but because we have to work together as a team, that was an experience that we had. And now we remember that and we go back and we make jokes about that. Or we talk about something that happened in there. And now it's like a shared experience that we actually had, even though we were sitting on our own little desk alone. Um, that is invaluable, honestly. Uh, a few of the people in my group are single, live alone, don't live close to any of their friends, really. And we still will joke around about a thing that happened on one of those group calls from four months ago. Right. So it, it's, yeah, I think it's important. There's a lot of resources. Um, it's fairly easy to Google <laughs> to find those type of things. Um, but I would suggest doing something like that. If you're really up for it, you could even create your own thing. So, uh, you know, I'm a game designer. My husband's a game designer. We run a lot of things. So we've done where we've done our own trivia. We've done, made our own scavenger hunt and then sent it to the friends and had them do it for a week. And then we gave out prizes. Um, right. Another friend did a scavenger thing that was, you know, kind of kid friendly. So families could do it. And it was fairly easy, but it was like a thing to do. And you had a whole week. So we've done things like that. So then right. I'm taking my walk, you know, I'm taking a walk and I have my phone with me and I'm like, Ooh, I need that. <laughs> and I'm taking a picture right. so I'm thinking about it. It's giving us something else to think about. And it kind of keeps your brain engaged in that scavenger hunt or thinking about questions. Well, you, for trivia. Yeah. And you get that dopamine hit every time you're like, Oh, I found that thing. You get yep. that rush of positive brain chemicals that, that yep. hits. Right. And one of the things I was thinking too, I've seen some people doing the, uh, I think it's, um, is it, is it Locktober? Is that how you say it? It's the, the makeup October. Where oh, it's a Looktober. Daily... Looktober. It's Looktober. Looktober. That's what it is. So there's Inktober where you're going to draw something every day. And then um, this is doing your makeup every day and taking a picture. It's very similar to that. It gives you a goal, gives you something you're thinking about. Um, so whatever you're into, I think it's a good idea to get a group together and think yeah. of doing things like that, especially probably would be a great time to do that in maybe January when you're a little bit more stuck at home. So, so those are some of the fun things that I've done that I just, I'm sure you've done similar type thing, but it's the kind of thing that makes me think, oh, that actually did like scratch that itch of yeah. feeling like I was actually with these people. 
Well, I think that's actually a big part of what prompted the gateway for us, right? Launching this new product where people can log in and find like-minded people that have already said, I want to be in this place at this time, socializing and interacting with people. Um, we're, we are expecting that there will be little groups that coalesce out of that. So if you're listening and you're like, I don't even know where to start. Like I don't, I wouldn't even know where to begin to find somebody. Pop over to the gateway, pick a game that looks exciting. You know, tell the Herald that you're you're kind of looking to find some footing. But also, there's opportunities to jump into conversations over there and be like, "Hey, I'm actually genuinely looking for a group. Does anybody have space for a regular uh, a thing?" Right, right. And one of the one of the good things, and there's only a few, you know, silver linings, but some of these silver linings are you're able to get a game group with people all over the country, all over the world, right? You could be with someone from Toronto and someone from Seattle and someone from Texas and you're in New Jersey and it works. And if your sleep cycles are completely upside down, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, right, exactly. So it's one of these things where, you know, in that regard, um, you're able to maybe have a larger pool. So potentially you live in a place where there's not a great game school store that has a community. It's hard for you to find people to play in person anyway. This is actually a time where you could reach out, like go on Gateway and meet people that might not be in your area, but that's okay. You could play online. So um, so that's exactly the kind of thing I'm, I'm suggesting that people seek out. Um, the online conventions obviously is the other thing. So the other thing is, you know, I think the first one might've been in Mar uh, May or June, everybody switched to online uh, right. game conventions, right? So some of them were successful, some of them were not as successful, but the main point is you get to try out games you maybe you never tried out before. You get to meet and play with different people. You get to learn about different things. So it's the same as going on Gateway, but in this regard, maybe you're it's it's a thing you're more into. So seeking out the you know, the specific like RPG things that would be at Metatopia, for example, or scratching that itch of, oh, I really don't have a lot of people to play storytelling games with. Oh, I can do this. I can actually reach out and in the community and say, who's looking to play something Saturday night? And yeah, you can do that. So that's a nice place to do it. A, a lot of people, um, you know, they will post on Twitter or Facebook and say, hey, I want to do something. But I think it's a little bit scarier to do that sometimes in that situation because like what if no one says they want to do it or what if our schedules don't work or now I'm in charge of handling this whole plan where that sounds you know, awful <laughs> right and that because I thought of it now I'm the person planning it right and I mean that happens right. to me all the time I'll say oh wouldn't it be cool to do a scavenger hunt well guess what I'm making a scavenger hunt <laughs> you know but yeah um, you know, I wanted it to happen, so I did it. But uh, going to the online convention, sometimes it's a little bit less scary to just kind of throw it out into the void and say, like, oh, I'd be up for something later on tonight. And then if no one says anything, no harm, no foul. And if they do, great. And hopefully you meet some new friends. So, you know, any of those you can attend, most of them are free, you know, right. um, to the attendees. So it, it's worth checking out, registering and checking them out at least. And it gives you a goal. Um, yeah. Oh, I was just going to say that a lot of the smaller regional conventions are starting to kind of feel their way into the online realm as well. And so if you're part of a convention community already that isn't a Gen Con or a PAX or one of the big regional conventions, the smaller conventions are starting to find their footing and they're starting a little more modestly, but it's still a chance to connect with a community that you already know and all, are already comfortable with. Right. So check it out. See see if they're taking anything on because some of them are. I have finally started to get contact from conventions saying, "Hey, so we're we're trying this tentatively. Like, what do we need to know so that we don't overburden ourselves?" Right. And, and it, it's it's worth seeking out. So if you normally go to a convention in you know November and you haven't heard anything about it, like go to their website. Maybe they're doing something online, or maybe they're doing some kind of you know, charity live stream or something that you can watch. I've seen some places maybe weren't actually having a con, but they were providing content where you could watch right. things, you could, you know, get discounts or play in games, things like that. So right. most of them right. are still trying to do something in some capacity, right? 
Well, so as like we get notification about the smaller regional conventions, they'll go up on the gateway calendar. So when you look, you'll see them, they'll be a different color and you'll just be able to scan through and see. And again, that's a cool way for people from different areas of the country to be like, hey, I'm attending this local convention with my buddy that I play a game with in high school, right? In a right. way that we wouldn't have that in a normal year. Exactly. I mean, those kinds of things, it's actually pretty cool if someone's like, hey, you know, I normally go to this North Carolina con with my buddies locally, but, you know, I'm going to talk to my friend in Boston and see if he wants to go online so we can play Pathfinder together. Awesome. Yeah. You know, and it's it's things like that that are happening, which is kind of cool, um, at least. <laughs> um, but one of the things I was thinking was, you know, you go to these online conventions, they're like I said, typically free. Uh, it gives you something not only to do that weekend, but also to look forward to, right? So you can get in there. You can look through the event list. You can see what special guests are showing up. You can read about the panels. And next thing you know, you're like, oh, I was just going to check this out. Now I'm scheduled. You know, I want to watch all the panels Friday night. I really want to do this game jam. I would love to see if anybody wants to play this game, et cetera, et cetera. And now you're booked up that weekend and it's, you actually have something to do like right. you're going to a con and it gives you maybe possibly uh, potentially homework in quotes afterwards. So let's say you're working as a writer or an artist or a designer, then you, you take all this feedback from that con weekend and now maybe that put, drives you forward for the next month to work on something. Um, I know us personally, every time a con is over, uh, my whole team is like way invigorated and we have a million ideas. And next thing you know, we're, we're either pushing through that last bit that we were kind of stuck on in a game that we were kind of like, eh, I don't want to have to deal with this. Or we just create a whole new game. <laughs> so, right. So one of the things that I know I've been missing is going to the actual con, having that like spark where it's like, oh, that panel along with that conversation I had, along with that new game I saw, along with this, it all came together, right? And um, it kind of fueled me and it fueled us to get things done. Um, not having that as much is something that's, you know, it's been okay and we've been forcing, you know, getting together and having brainstorming sessions. But it's one of those things where if you're already kind of in a funk or you're having a tough time as everyone is, um, sometimes cre the creativity goes away you know, that suffers. You have to deal with X, Y, and Z at work or health stuff or kids stuff. And you just don't have the energy to then sit down at 8 PM and write that story or draw or whatever you're working on. Um, and I find going to these type of things makes and listening to panels kind of invigorates. It kind of hits in a different area and it goes, Oh, I am going to do this and I'm going to make myself a goal and I am going to do that. So I feel like that's a very healthy thing to do. And even anyone who maybe never had gone to an online convention or a convention could try to actually experience it now because yeah. that's what I get when I go to them. It always gives me something. Every panel I sit in, um, you know, well, I can't tell you how many years ago was it. Five to seven years ago was the first Metatopia. I, I would say right. something in that range. And like that first Metatopia, I think I went to like 12 panels or maybe more and I was like, oh, that and that and that and that. That's great. And every time I'm there now as a little bit more veteran, I still find things for myself. But then I get to see newcomers have those same like hits that I had five, seven years ago. Um, you know, so it's it's nice. And it's the kind of thing that might be scary to actually go to in person sometimes. So this is a way you can check it out and see the type of content that it would be if you ever went to a Metatopia uh, in the future. And if you just are like, hey, I wanna get into game design, I don't even know anything about it. This would be like such a good low key way to do it, right? Yeah. And why not? I'm sure there are many, many huge names that are going to be talking. We don't have the full list yet, but there's going to be good content. There's going to be interesting talks. So I assume, you know, it's going to be pretty good content and we're, you're going to, you know, you're going to come away from that being extremely happy that you attended. So it's one of those things where like, I always have been in person, um, but also uh, as a game designer, it's a con I always think to go to. So um, it's a little different well, if I you're not. 
I think we're working really hard to find the balance point because one of the things we're aware of is when you're at a Metatopia, you're in space outside of time. And yep. you're in this bubble where what you're doing is this very focused, intense, concentrated experience. But people are going to be in, interlacing this year's Metatopia with the things going on in their real in their real life. Right, right. Um, the thing I'm really excited about is, I don't know about you, I grew up in AOL chat rooms, right? And BBSs. Yeah. And I have friendships that started online that persist to this day that are, you know, 25-year friendships. Right. And um, the fact of the matter is that because these tools are popping up where Metatopia is happening online and we're doing some social stuff and NunPub happened online and people got together and did game design stuff and itch.io is doing all these game jams and everybody I talk to that's a designer is talking about I did this jam or I thought about that jam or I'm working on this design project. Um, I'm really excited by the fact that then when we are able to gather in person again, there's going to be these connections that already exist where maybe somebody attended their first convention online and then they come and join us in person and just get pulled into the community like they've always been there. And so that's one of the silver linings I'm looking forward to. That's going to be great. And and I just know from doing NunPub, which was an online convention that I ran back in August, um, some of the volunteers that we had... uh, I had never met before. And now I'm like really good friends with them because we worked together a couple of weeks leading up to it. And during that whole weekend, same with the Metatopia online, Astrid and I, uh, one of the helpers uh, the other day had a big talk. And now I can see us getting together at Metatopia and having a talk and having a whole bunch of fun. So it's just one of those things where when you get that opportunity to connect with someone, most of the time, you, most of the time, uh, it's a friendly connection. And if it is a friendly connection, when you see them uh, in person later, it's like, oh yeah, I know you from that game, or we were talking on social chat, or you volunteered when I did. We were in that game jam, and it just it makes it a little bit easier uh, to, and welcoming when you get there when you when you see somebody. Um, even just online, if you only just say, I don't want to, I only want to go online. Maybe we keep online for the future. Who knows? Um, still you see, I go, Oh, I know, I know Abby. I'm going to say hi to Abby, or I'm going to invite, you know, these three people I met last year and see if they're available, you know, are they still going that kind of thing? So it's, it's very helpful. And, um, if you are a little bit, uh, have a little bit of social anxiety, this is like the perfect way to go into go to attending a con, you know, it's absolutely 100%, you know, you don't have to show your video. You don't have to talk. You don't even have to post if you don't want to, you can just observe, you know, so that's, Uh, that's nice. One of the delightful components of that is that if you are a little introverted and you pop over to tabletop simulator or board game arena and you go, ah, too many options. Can't, Mm -hmm. can't figure this out. Yep. The online conventions and the gateway have codes of conduct and rules and and P, and there's structure to the socialization. So in the same way that walking into a library and introducing yourself to a gaming group that's hanging out there might be a little scary, um, there's still the structure of, you know, we gather at this time and these games are going to be on the table and there's a person that's watching out for the room. And so in a lot of ways, uh, for people who are having a hard time finding ways to network and connect uh, online, these are ways to overcome that burden, that hurdle with a little bit of structure and a little bit of organization behind it. Yeah, that actually brings me to thinking about the um, online gaming groups. So we uh, have a Philadelphia Game Makers Guild that has typically met in person obviously up until March. So it would have a a meeting. I think it was like the second Wednesday of every month and then the fourth Wednesday of every month. And um, another person would run the second Wednesday and then I would run the last Wednesday. And we would get to meet new people and kind of tell them about our experience. We would curate like what games were going to be played versus what games you know, we're going to be played next week, that kind of thing. They would, they would put their game list in, we would do that. And it's all play testing type things. But when it went to online, we, we'd have a standing Wednesday where it's on tabletop simulator and you just join a discord. Well, now you're coming in here and you're like, okay, I don't see your, ha- your welcoming faces. I am a little nervous because I don't know how to use tabletop simulator. 
you know, et cetera, et cetera. So in the very beginning, it was tough kind of getting new people in. And, you know, then we would, we would post in the Facebook group and we would say, Hey, you know, join, we can help you. You can do this. And after a while, you know, you'd get your new person that says, I finally, you know, I finally got my game on tabletop simulator, or I need help with tabletop simulator or whatever, or I just want to come play and socialize and meet everybody. Cause I moved to this area over the winter and I've never got to come to your, to your game uh, nights. So we've had things like that, which has been really nice. We've had people, um, you know, just reach out for advice on things. So, you know, that was one of the communities that got hit really hard by the fact that we couldn't meet in person. And luckily we've kept it going and we are getting a lot of uh, interest in it on a weekly basis, which is really nice. And I know that Gil, who was on the other night, runs the New York one and I, pretty sure that it's going the, about the same way. So that's one of those things where if you were looking to um, eventually meet in person, you could seek out one of your local um, playtesting or gaming groups. There typically are them in most of the big cities. Um, again, that's probably something you could look around in Gateway and ask those heralds, and I bet you those people know what's going on uh, with everything <laughs> regarding that too. So. Or so if you're completely lost, you can ping me on Twitter and I'll connect you with a human somewhere near you. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So that was something else. So, you know, that happened and we kind of had to pivot and and throw that online. Um, something I'm doing just personally that, you know, maybe some of you are, some of you are not, is, you know, if you're working and you're working remote, um, are you having team building events with your coworkers or are you not even talking to them or... Are you only right. in the meetings with them? And that's it. Um, I know some people are scheduling happy hours or after work meetings on Friday at, you know, five o'clock or something just to kind of have a social uh, thing like they would normally, um, you know, other places like there's a place that I'm doing some freelance work for where every Wednesday at lunch, uh, I run board games and party games for their entire company. Right. So that way they can connect. They have that shared experience that we were talking about. They yeah. maybe are on teams together. They learn things about each other. And then when they all this in a few months or whenever the heck it is, maybe this person from this floor and this person from this floor never met, but they played right. games for 26 weeks. So they're pretty close friends now. You know? so, You're such an optimist. So That's such a nice low number. That's such a nice low number. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to say 52 weeks. I guess I'll put it, you know, a half a year. But anyway, um, you know, it's one of those things where I think people sometimes undervalue that that connection. I know when I when it first hit COVID and it was, okay, you're working remote for 12 weeks or whatever they originally said. I was like, great, I don't have to talk to these people. Like, I don't have my boss on the phone. I don't have to see him every day because at the time I was at a place where my boss kind of a jerk and uh it was a very demanding job that I've since quit but it was one of those things where I was happy to not talk to them and just do a lot through email get on the necessary calls that I had to get on but I wasn't really connecting with them uh, mainly because I was everything was uh coming over from my stress before that right. but if I had if I was still there at this point um you know, having a connection, like getting all together to play a game or even just chat and check in and see what's going on is pretty important, even in that business world, because you start to lose that connection of the, uh, I sit next to this person and we talk about their kids or their dog or their vacation or those kind of things. And you end up losing that because most people don't take the time to send an email out to the company to say, oh, my you know, my dog looked really cute today or something like that, <laughs> you know, or uh, my kid said this really funny thing last night. You know, they're not going to say that uh, in a broadcast email. Maybe if you're lucky enough to have like a Slack channel that allows socialization in your work, possibly. But a lot of times the more corporate places are not that savvy and they don't even allow it. So um, a lot of people are probably isolating from their work friends, too, I would assume. Right. You know, right. so... And that's another thing too. If your work friends aren't really gamers, maybe this is a way you can kind of get them in and say, Hey, I know about this game thing. We, you know, I can show you this and you can, next thing you know, you're bringing them in and they're all playing just one. 
because that's a great gateway game, <laughs> or they're all just playing absolutely wave, is. or they're playing wavelength, or they're playing code names, and next thing you know, they're like, I want to play more of this. So, yeah, you know. Yep. Uh, one of the things that has come up in the last uh, week is that we need to end our talking about our next like feature request for the gateway to be an actual looking for group. So if yeah. you pop over and you're like, I really want something where I can introduce my work friends to something that's low barrier to entry, Hogwarts Battle looks like something that all the people at work would be excited by. Uh, posting a request and being like, we would love to do this on Wednesday at 3 p.m. if there's someone available. And we'll try to do the matchmaking so that you have a GM that'll guide you through it and help overcome that burden for whether it's Tabletop Simulator or Board Game Arena. I will say the first time I've touched any of those systems, I have damaged something. I, I did a play test with Kurt where I accidentally flipped the table in Tabletop Simulator, and I'm like, why would you let me have that option? Why would you give me that capacity? That was a mistake on your part. <laughs> <laughs> but right? yeah, I know what you mean. I mean, and it's a lot of them, even even the ones that are quote unquote the most intuitive. It's always you come into a new technology, you don't know what you're doing something's going to get messed up or you're going to realize, oh, well, I should have done that. Now I see, but the game's kind of halfway ruined, but we'll, we'll play again or something like that. Right. So there is a learning curve and that would be nice to have somebody kind of guiding, guiding you through it. Um, WV Gamers over in the Twitch chat says, at our company, we had literally just put together a game group to do a game night one to two times a month and then COVID. And now maybe you can get them roped back in and be like, hey, here's a game that we played together in person. Do you want to play online? Yeah, it's true. I mean, it's one of those things where um, keeping those connections is pretty important. I know like a lot of a lot of people are friendly uh, in the game community with other people on Facebook. But if you're not seeing each other for a year, year and a half, whatever, you kind of start to break down those th those connections a little bit if you're not working together. So this is a good way to kind of, you know, with your work friends or your game industry friends kind of say, Hey, we should do something together. And we should, you know, even if it's not a standing every Wednesday, it could just be, Hey, this one off who's around let's play Sunday and just do something like that. Just to kind of get some connection in is a really, really cool. So I would suggest that. Um, the other thing I was thinking, I don't know about you, but I found, um, watching a lot of these, uh, Twitch stream shows is also, pretty engaging if you follow like let's say girls game shelf or rachel and julie do like a morning coffee um i think it's called you're invited there's also carla who uh weird giraffe that does some content that is actually helpful like teaching you how to pitch and how to hone your design skills but then there's also just social chats where you know once a week you can get together and you know discuss a topic and but you as the attendee are in the conversation. So sometimes just following a podcast, a Twitch stream, you know, any of these Facebook groups that are, are um, streaming content, that kind of stuff. Also, if that's, especially if that's how you learn, if you like to watch people play games or talk about things, those are great as well, because they're going to be giving you the same thing uh, that you might be getting from actually attending a con, but in a, structured format that you're connecting you're seeing them you're talking live to them and yeah. you're also doing something that you're learning about something or doing something that you like so that would be another thing i would suggest to seek out um there are a ton of options out there there are, <laughs> there are a ton so sometimes narrowing it down what to get is hard but um i i've noticed the number of just in general, the number of uh, streaming content groups has probably doubled <laughs> since COVID. I mean, the number of people are like, guess I'm doing this now. So, um, guess I'm doing this now, you know. Uh, we've done so many more actual Case plays. Case in point. Yeah. I might <laughs> be doing it too soon. Um, but it's one of those things that, uh, you know, just the more more actual plays, more Zoom games online. It's just, unfortunately, yeah. if it's something you don't like, that's the world we live in. If it's something you do like, good for you because it is the way. There's things, a lot of options. Yep. It's the way things are going. Um, you know, but I think we kind of saw that pre-COVID anyway. I mean, it was going that way. It just skyrocketed because of COVID. So everything is, is Zoom and Twitch now. 
Um, and everybody had time to actually conquer the learning curve. Right. The they had time to learn it. They had time to get in. If they don't want to do it themselves, there's also people who are like, oh, I'm going to go just surf Twitch for four hours. I'm not doing anything this Saturday night because I can't go anywhere. So next thing you know, you have that time. To find the really cool sites. You yep. know, follow the, the things that are you're really interested in as well. Um, you know, I know for myself, I've done a lot of like personal art type projects or skills building this whole time. Mm -hmm. And it's been cool that I conquered that. But at the same time, it's a very solo thing. I can be like, oh, I did this. And they're like, cool. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Or here's a thing I made. And not that, that, not that that's not good and interesting. And I think we should continue to do that. It's, but there's still that connection um, where I find it much more fulfilling if I've spent a Friday night with somebody playing a game online or doing a watch party. That was something else um, yeah. I have on my list here as another social thing I forgot. You know, Netflix watch party. I think Facebook has watch party now where you can. Oh, do they? Oh, cool. I think so. I thought I saw something. But you could say, oh, we're going to, let's watch a scary movie together or whatever. And, or let's, you know, watch the same show and make fun of it. You know, that kind of thing. Like we're in the same room. So, um, you know, that was I've also done crafting parties where people just like pop up the video call in the background and then they're working on, I, you know, early in the pandemic, it was making masks and kind of hanging out together while pressing piece after piece of fabric to <laughs> end up sewing them together or uh, crocheting and chatting and talking about anything except COVID. That's a good idea. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, the other thing that I've really experienced is that as long as I am diligent about, I'm not allowed to doom scroll. I'm not allowed to like get sucked into, I'm not allowed to comment on anything political. <laughs> I'm not allowed to get on any soapboxes. I've had really good luck connecting with people more deeply and doing actual, like actual professional networking using both Facebook and Twitter because people are being more vulnerable online and talking more about the stuff that's going on right. in their lives and sharing things like I made this magnificent meal. And like early in the pandemic, I got in, invited to a work from home cooking group on Facebook. Okay. That is a lot of uh, colleagues in the industry that are just like, here's the thing we're cooking this week. And it started from the, like, I don't want to cook another meal. Why do we have to feed humans every single day? This is ridiculous. <laughs> and it turned into kind of a cozy ongoing conversation where those interpersonal connections are deeper and more grounded in our daily life than they are when we just run into each other at conventions. And so in a lot of ways for me, that's scratching a niche where I feel like I've got a community where we're all kind of in this together Yep. Um, and it's very positive, but it also takes the diligence of being like, yeah, I saw your, stu you know, I saw something over here that I don't want to engage with and I'm just going to not right now. I know it exists, but it's okay to log into Facebook and be like only fuzzy things. Right. I'm only doing fuzzy things right now. Yep. I will go and deal with the political state of the world <laughs> in tomorrow. I can just be fuzzy today. Right. And that that's a really good point. Um, I know other people, I've got some friends, this was not something I did because I'm not a writer, but I've got some friends who had been kind of over the last year or so finishing up their novel or their short story. So then they've ended up kind of getting into these little groups of other writers and either like each reading each other's books or helping give editor advice. Like, hey, here's a good editor I use, this, that, the other thing. Here's an agent I use. Here's this, here's that. and you know, they would get together maybe once a month and talk about progress. They would check in. They're held accountable. They're talking about something they love to do. And they're also like have a shared goal. So similar to your crafting and your cooking thing, even though that's quote unquote for fun. So is this writing for now. And they're trying to get published, but it's something that they like to do. So I know a bunch of people who have done things like that as well. And they find it super rewarding. And and they got into the group and they kind of knew that person because they were also talking about, oh, I'm writing a novel too. But maybe it's a right. friend of a friend and now they're actually bonding. Yep. You know, so when they see each other in person, they're going to be like, oh my God, you know, we're like, let's hang out. So I, I think that is valuable at this time. Like if there's something you are into, there's probably a group <laughs> that is 
also into it right now. Maybe I know I saw the other day somebody said, is anybody else learning this language? And was like seeking out friends that were learning a language so that maybe they could bond over that throughout the pandemic. Well, that's really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah I got- somehow ended up committed to two groups this, like in the last week, one group that's growing plants together, like okay. things that'll grow indoor during the winter. And it's like 10 people that are growing plants and reporting back. And the other is a group that's going to be doing um, crafting either quilting or crochet or knit blocks once a month. Okay. And so you do this and you to a measurement. And then at the end of the year, you have enough to put together a blanket. Oh, that's cool. Um, and you're you're absolutely right that those both of those came out of people looking for connections and other people that were excited. And I was just like, yeah, that sounds I I I like gardening is cozy and I like doing that. And it's about to be gross and wet outside all the time. So yes, I would like to grow things I can eat. That sounds right. great. Yeah. So it, right, it's it's those kind of things. There's all there's actually a like humans can be actually resourceful and smart. We're not, it's not all doom and gloom. Okay. You know, <laughs> so there's actually so many interesting things like this are coming up. I mean, I've heard people talk, oh, during this time I've done A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And I kind of put together a list a couple months ago, maybe like actually probably only about a month ago of just all the things that I've done since the pandemic. And I was like, actually, that's pretty cool. Like that I got a lot of things done even though a lot of us think like, oh, this year's like a wasted year. We can't do anything. And, you know, there's a lot of doom and gloom about it. Um, but when you look back, it's like, oh, I learned that thing or I completed that project or I met these 10 awesome new friends or whatever is happening. Um, but I think, you know, it's one thing to say, okay, I, <laughs> I played 700 hours of Animal Crossing or something like that. And obviously there's, an- I know there's Animal Crossing connections for sure i mean that was probably i think the whole country's number one connection for the whole month of march was let's talk about uh what we did in animal crossing so that was actually great that that was out at that time and obviously people are still playing it and all of that um but it's one of those things where there's a connection there but that connection is slowly fading It, it was like intense in march and people are still talking about hey i have this on my island come see this fireworks display or did you get that special thing for the birthday or did you get the Halloween thing yet? Um, And that's the thing to talk about, but maybe it's not necessarily that like personal connection that you're seeking. Like you are also the new relationship energy with the game has cooled off a little bit. Now it's just a steady backbeat instead of the thing that everybody's driven by. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say Amanda, who's hanging out in the chat with us has done a bunch of animal crossing streaming and cool. she and I have actually gotten much friendlier because we're both playing and I got on board. I didn't come on board until June. And so a lot of people were really excited to be like, hold on, hold on, duckling. We'll get you caught up. We'll get you, yeah. you know, here's, <laughs> I have all this stuff. I have all this knowledge. Let me teach you how to catch wasps. Like don't get stung in the face. It'll be fine. Right. Um, and so I had kind of a different experience, which was that people had already formed these communities and were already talking about it. And I showed up and I'm like, I have my fishing rod. And they were like, oh my God, let's help you. And it was <laughs> amazing. Awesome. It was that's really cool. sweet. Yeah, that's cool. And like, that was something like Nintendo, I don't, you didn't plan it, but great job because it came out at like the perfect time. And yeah. it's like the coziest, cutest, possibly themed game in the world. And it, it's great. So, I mean, it's one of those things where like that, that has been, what has been awesome. But it, in case you're not a video gamer, you don't have that, whatever, you know, I think some of these other things are really going to be, um, especially through the winter, going to be really helpful. I mean, this year we know now going, okay, we know what's happening. It's not going to get thrown on us on March 15th or whatever it was. And we have to change our entire life. And we just sit there going like, what? for a month um you know now we know what we're doing but also sometimes it's already seasonal depression time frame it's already cold weather it's already like holidays all that's already happening oh and this is on top of it so there's a lot of things where even if you're typically like oh i don't get affected by that or i'm fine it's like well maybe you need to think about some other ways to connect especially if you live by yourself or if you're stressed at work or whatever else is going on in your life. Um, you know, I know for well, myself. There's... Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm just going to say, I know for myself, okay. I'm pretty laid back. But I have found, like, because the weeks and everything kind of, like, 
meld together. And then I'm like, did I accomplish anything? Like, I'm like, what did I do last weekend? I don't remember. So sometimes I find like, if I, don't like make a plan to be like, okay, we'll like, I'm going to make this for dinner and then we're going to go to walk. We're going to go to this park and I want to play this new game. I haven't played yet. Even if it's something like that minor, I'll just kind of like say that's something as a goal for me to get done that weekend. And then I feel like, Oh, I've accomplished something, you know, I've had entire weeks where I've had to go back and be like, okay, what do, what do my uh, selfies and my cat pictures say happened this week? Like, yeah. hello phone, reassure me that this week happened. No, right. there were in fact seven days in this week. I have photographic proof. <laughs> um, the other thing for people to keep in mind is that there are actually experts who have worked in crisis zones and dealt with, um, with crisis management who say that there, there is a six month barrier there's a threshold where when you get to six months, your brain just sort of gives up on the idea that the world could ever be different than it is right now. And so from the perspective of people who have worked in war zones and crisis zones and natural disaster areas, six months out is actually the point at which the human brain is like, screw it, it's awful, I'm just gonna lay here and whatever. And um, so knowing that and knowing that Entropy is really slow. If you're going to lay in the middle of the path and wait for entropy to take you, the world is going to keep moving and you're going to be there for a while. Right. And so for me, the the actual thought process of, okay, well, entropy is going to take forever. The floor hasn't swallowed me yet. Let me find a couple of things to come up with some momentum and just keep moving, right? Find yeah. something where I find a point of connection, a point of joy, I did one of the panels on NunPub, and as soon as I committed to it, I was like, what did I just do to myself? Oh my God, I, like, I'm not being social with people. I'm, I'm in my hobbit hole. I'm still mourning the fact that like, Dexcon didn't happen. Gen Con was so different and so, like, for me, it was very disorienting mm -hmm. because we deal with so many people in person. We have a hall where you can see everybody, and we were in our living room and couldn't see right. anyone, and... So I was in my pit and then I was like, yeah, I'll do this thing. Cause I've got this principle that if I'm invited to participate in someone else's convention, I do so enthusiastically and wholeheartedly because so many people have supported us. But I had that moment of what did I do to myself? And then I like sucked it up and I did it. And I was like, oh, this was actually really lovely. It was nice to talk to people and talk about things that were like, you know, acknowledge Right. That the world is on fire and everything feels awful, but there's also tomorrow and we're going to get up and people will have designed cool games and we'll be yep. play testing them. And we're going to be helping people find artists and there's going to be artists able to pay their bills because there's still games being published. And that's pretty cool. Right. And it's one of those things too. Like I think probably 90% of the people listening or out there, you know, have the same, it's kind of this like wave where you're like everything I'm going to, I'm on it. I'm not going to let it bother me. And then you kind of go, oh, letting it bother me, letting it bother me. You know what? I'm done letting it bother me. And then you kind of go through this and that's going to happen. That's natural. Um, you know, so of course, like we're not saying that all this is going to solve every problem, but these are things that you could say, okay, maybe on Monday I'm feeling pretty crappy, but I know I scheduled my game night for Thursday night with my friends, or I know I'm going to attend that convention on Thursday. So I've got that to look forward to. So hopefully by the next Monday, you don't, you're not in that much of a slump as you were that, you know, current Monday. So it's one of those, it's one of those things where, you know, we're all going to have to, they always say like one day at a time, but it kind of is like, you have to do one day at a time, one week at a time. We can only control, we can control, uh, unfortunately, and <laughs> it sucks, but that's just what we have to do. Yeah. And playing online means no stressing out over the dude at the next table who refuses to keep his mask over his nose. Like <laughs> there's some silver linings here. Right, right. You don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about like the fact that um, you have to go to a place and are they going to actually have the measures that they say they're having? Um, you know, they said it was outdoor, but everybody's really close or whatever. You know, when you right. you go to these places, it, it's not always uh, the way you expect it to be. Um, funny story. I don't know if this has happened to you yet, but a couple of times I've been watching uh, something on TV that is people in a crowded area and i've been like wait from the before time yeah and i'm like how are they they shouldn't be oh wait that was from last year i forgot you know or i'll be like oh right you know and it's the i'm like how are they that close oh that's 
oh, never mind. And I just they're like, all touching my brain, the same like, thing. Why are they touching things? Oh, it's terrible. And then you're like, right. It's okay. They're fine. It's okay. That's exactly. past them. And you're right. It's probably because like we are hit, we are at the six month time frame. My brain's like, well, you can't do that now. I've learned that behavior. So when I see it, I'm like, oh, why are they hug? Oh, wait. Oh, they're sharing a drink. What are they doing? You know, or something like that. And then, oh, right, right. That's from before. <laughs> uh, so yeah, yeah. It's a strange, weird thing. And um, I mean, at least I gotta say, thank God we're in the games industry because that's something you can actually do and it can be done online and if you're lucky enough to live with other people who like games you can actually play them in person like what a concept but <laughs> you know that doesn't always happen so you know um i don't know but yeah basically like to wrap up i mean any any way you can find a connection and it, this this year is important but there are tons of ways to do it in the board game industry and role-playing game industry as well yeah so yeah i'm excited that they're going to have a looking to hang and looking looking for a group in gateway that's a really good idea because... it just it it's kind of the next natural evolution of things and we're always iterating we kind of treat this like game design where we're like oh here's another thing that we want to add into this because it makes sense Right. And it just makes sense that if somebody's looking to learn, Kobolds ate my baby. Um, which, by the way, on Facebook, I got a lot of, tell Heather how much we love the game. <laughs> um, <laughs> but being able to say, hey, we are looking for a GM. We are looking for somebody. I, the first time I went to Geekway to the West was the first time I'd seen the looking for teacher right. uh, pop-ups for the table. And it just blew my mind. I was like, that's because double exposure events, our audience prefers to like walk in knowing what they're going to play when. So the open gaming thing was a big adjustment for our crew. Um, and so the first time I saw it at Geekway, I'm like, that was brilliant. I yeah. could like sneak over and be like, I totally know that game. I can teach it for you real quick in two minutes. Nice. Um, and we're going to, we're just going to implement that and iterate that and see what we can do to make sure that people know that it is okay to say, I'd love to learn this Envoy game. I'd love to talk to somebody that knows these nuances. Right. Um, we do have the rule books posted, right? We're starting to put up rule books so that there's a place that as a player, you can go and look, but there's nothing that replaces having somebody that actually knows the game and has certified in it to just walk you through it. 100%. I mean, the best way to learn a game is to play the game, right? So um, if you don't know how to play the game, it's going to be tough. So therefore, you're you're fumbling through. You might get some of the rules wrong. You know, next thing you know, you're like, we've been doing this wrong for the last 25 minutes or something if you're trying to teach yourself, right? Yeah. Um, that happens all the time. So if you can get somebody that actually knows what they're doing to like walk you and your friends through it, next thing you know, it's like, oh, okay, that was really cool. Maybe I am going to buy that or maybe I am going to, you know, uh, try different games that are kind of like this because I'm going to assume most heralds know like oh if I like let's just say for example uh you know seven wonders you know what other games could I play or I really like you know Everdell what other games are in this type of genre right so well and all of our titles are tagged so if you like a thing and you're like okay I like you know, I played uh, One Night Ultimate Werewolf and loved it. What type of game was this? What what do I call this? Oh, it's a social deduction game. You right. click on the link and it'll bring up other social deduction games that are happening this month or next month. Um, and so you can kind of, it's like Pandora's Magic where they were like, you like these three songs, so you're going to like this song. Yep. It'll, it'll connect you in that sort of, I liked this, so what about that way? Nice. Yeah, that's awesome. uh, I also know that part of what's going to happen is that heralds are going to develop followings where people will show up and play anything Shayla is running or anything Amanda or Brian is running. They're right. just going to be like, I, I don't care. It's on the schedule and they're running it. I'm going to jump in and play. Right. And that's another thing. I, honestly, um, I'm sure people connect with a herald, right? Just like we're making a connection with or, you know, we're coworkers, friends, whatever. It's like, oh, they, that was really fun. Like they were a really fun person. I really liked what they did. I want to do anything that they're doing. Next thing you know, you've you've gone to, you know, 10 of their events and you're kind of friendly with them. So then when you see them, it's like, oh, that's Amanda. Awesome. Hi. Yeah. You know, so yeah. it's And cool. we used to have that benefit at local game stores, but until it's safe for people to gather every Saturday and be like, hey, what you got under your arm? What's the splash this week? Right. We have to replicate it online. Um, and I love that 
people having someone there means you're not overcoming the curve of the game and the platform. Right. That's really nice. Yeah. Cause that's definitely one of the things that, um, I think a lot of people are scared of. I know even when we have our own, like friends game night, some people will say, you know, I don't have any energy to a new game tonight. Okay, no problem. We're just going to play a game we all know, you know, and that's just, that's the state of the world right now. Some people just don't have that kind of energy. They need someone to walk them through or they need someone to like be there to hold, hold their hand. And that is fine. <laughs> Even in the before times, yes, Linda true. would be like, let's play this new thing I want to teach you. And I'd be like, something I've played at least twice before, please. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, it's even amplified more potentially now. So having someone yeah. help is nice, but cool. Um, yeah. I so think is there that's... any other tips that you want to share that you found really helpful during this season of craziness? I mean, the main thing that the main things that I found helpful were actually scheduling things on my calendar that I had to be accountable for to attend, um, because then that didn't that let that week kind of go. What happened? What day is it? And also, if you are kind of in a funk type of mood, it gives you that looking forward to and that well, I committed that I go now. Not to say you couldn't back out, but it kind of it kind of solidifies more. Like I have a plan on Thursday night for example. So I found that has been helpful. And then again, just connecting, not just on like a, not just via text, like via actual video and chat. Those would be my two main things to say, like That's fair. make a plan and actually see someone's face. <laughs> there we go. All right, Heather, thank you for joining us. I really appreciate the fact that you took the time out of your Wednesday. Um, so Oh, the, uh, Brian says, we have a few kids that came to play games with us every weekend pre-COVID at our local FLGS, and they keep messaging us to see if we can come to their library to teach Aww. them. See if you can get them involved. I'm sure that we can find a couple of kid-friendly, like uh, Sparkle Kingdom would be a good one. Um, but that, That's really cute, and that's that's the things that we're trying to replicate are those connections while we can't gather at the libraries. Right exactly that's cute yeah all right i think we're gonna wrap it here okay. um uh, does Thanks. the audience have any questions that we didn't touch on yet yep um so while i give the audience the 30 second delay to ask any questions that they have what yeah. are you playing this week that you're really excited by what have i been playing um hmm what have I been playing? Um, so on Board Game Arena, I played this game called Butterfly by Rio Grande. It's from a few okay. years ago. It's actually really fun. Um, and it's surprisingly high strategy for how silly and late it looks. Um, so that's a new game I discovered this week on Tuesday, last night. Um, and then I just introduced some people to Bring Your Own Book, which if you've never played, is kind of like an apples to apples comparison, but you literally look your answers up in a book. So you can have a novel or a cookbook or whatever book you want to bring. And then the prompt might say like a funny thing to say on Dorian book. And that is their answer. So nice. that is a fun online thing that we've been able to play. And depending on the, the range of books, it's been pretty funny. So I suggest that one. Awesome. Cool. All right. It looks like uh, the audience is wishing us all a good night and say thank you for us being here. So. Uh, Thank you. Great. Thank Have you. Have a good so night, fun. everybody. Good night. Bye.